Hello students and welcome to chapter 5.8 research and development and this is video one and there's only one video in this chapter. Within the syllabus this is the eighth chapter in topic five operations management and if you're going through the syllabus in order there's only one more chapter after this. There's four learning objectives so let's get going. So the definition of research and development is the scientific research and technological development of new products and processes. So it's, it's effectively coming up with new ideas for product and processes. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples so we can have, add some context here. So the first one is for a car manufacturer. So some things that they might be research and developing at the moment is autonomous driving. So um, as I'm doing this video, autonomous driving is uh, becoming more popular and uh, car companies are trying to develop this for their cars. Improve fuel efficiency. This is, I guess, for petrol engines so that um, their cars become more efficient with fuel and use less fuel. And then consumers are more likely to buy them because they know that they're going to use less petrol if they buy them. Lighter materials for the cars. Again, that makes them lighter, so they use less fuel. Um, but also more efficient manufacturing processes. So this is where the definition says new products and processes. It's not just developing new products. Um, if we develop more efficient ways of manufacturing the cars or whatever they're producing, then their costs of sales are going to go down. The production costs are going to go down and it's going to make the business more profitable. For an accounting firm, some ideas might be um, more use of AI, so use of chatbots for clients, new client portals, so when clients log on and um, interact with what the firm is doing, then that becomes better, maybe more interactivity in the website, um, and there are various other things that they can do as well. So as of 2022, this graph was produced. So the number one spender on research and development was Amazon with about 73 billion, followed by Meta, Alphabet, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing that's pretty obvious from the table is most of these are tech companies, all but Volkswagen at the bottom there. So at the moment, as I'm doing this video, it's mostly tech companies who are spending the largest amount of money. But obviously, other companies are spending lots of money as well. They just haven't made the top 10. So let's move on to why research and development is important. The first thing to note, however, is these two bullet points here. Research and development is costly um, and it doesn't guarantee success. And so businesses who don't do any of it will actually save money in the short run and be more profitable. But in the long run, there are clear benefits of research and development. So the first one is the advantage over the competition. So businesses spend money developing better products, better processes. They, in theory, are going to have better products and they can be the future market leaders or in the future, they can gain market share as customers buy more of their products. They can have higher customer loyalty. So if a business is known for having the best technology, the best products, then customers are more likely to buy those products and therefore they're going to have higher customer loyalty and customers will keep on buying those products. They can charge higher prices because customers will see their products as premium. They can then use pro premium pricing, which is when we set those higher prices um, to reflect the, that the product is basically premium. We can also create property rights, which is coming up on a future slide, but we can create these intangible assets such as patents. Um, we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, and the business can then potentially sell these or they can be the only business that actually produces this type of product. But we'll, we'll come to that on a later slide. And like I said earlier, if, we, if they've developed new ways of manufacturing, then we're going to get lower costs of production. Um, and that's going to lead to lower costs and therefore better profit margins moving forward. On to a couple of definitions. We've got incremental innovation and disruptive innovation. So these are two ways in which research and development can actually impact the product. So one method of innovation or research and development is incremental. This is when the innovation or the, the new product, if you like, um, the, the, the improvement innovation is relatively small and the updated product is a small improvement. So I think a good example here is every year when Apple brings out the new iPhone, then this is incremental innovation. Every year they bring out a new iPhone in September and it's slightly better than the previous one. Some people will say it's the same thing, but um, in theory, it's slightly better than the previous one. And over time, those incremental innovations add up to be quite significant. So down here is a picture of the original iPhone versus I think this is an iPhone 13. Maybe one of you can tell me um, if it's not. 
And you can see that there's been 12 incremental innovations here. And over time, the difference is really big. But each year, the, the actual change in the iPhone isn't that big. The, different, the opposite then is disruptive innovation. This is when the innovation is much larger. And it's often when we create a new product or a market. So when the original iPhone 1 was launched, then that would have been disruptive innovation because up until then we didn't have smartphones. So it completely changed the market. Some other examples would be Netflix with the uh, streaming market, digital cameras replacing the cameras with the film inside of it, Uber with taxis, and then 3D printing is another example. So the uh, final part of the syllabus is intellectual property rights. So intellectual property rights are related to research and development because if a business comes up with a new idea, a new product, they can then apply to get some intellectual property rights on that product. So Intellectual property rights, or IPR, are the legal rights assigned to the owners of these research and development. Here, works related to human creativity. And there are three types we're going to look at. The first one is a patent, and this is intellectual property rights related to inventions. And so the patent stops anyone else making use of the invention. So if the business comes up with a new idea for a product and they get a patent on it, then no one else can actually produce that product. And therefore, that's a really, really big, big advantage for the business. And so that's one of the big advantages for research and development is being able to get a patent. A trademark is related to brand, images, logos, and names. And trademark, again, stops anyone else using similar images. So here we've got the Starbucks logo, and you've probably seen this TM in various places. This means trademark, and that means, obviously, that no one else can use um, the Starbucks logo or anything that's deemed legally too similar to that image. The final IPR is copyright, and this is related to work produced by artists, writers, and musicians, and the copyright stops anyone using their work. Quick final thing, factors that might influence how much research and development a company does. Well, the nature of the industry is obviously important. So we've talked today about smartphones, industry, the car industry. They're going through big changes, so they probably need to spend more than other industries on research and development. The culture of the organization is also important. And one thing is short term versus long termism, because if a business says we're going to do research and development, it might take years to see the benefits. So whether they how much money they spend on the R&D may have to do with how how much the business prioritizes the short versus the long term. And the final thing is access to finance, because obviously R&D is expensive. So the business has lots of access to finance, and it's more likely that they're going to choose to do R&D. Okay, that's that chapter finished. I'll see you next time.